All right. My name is Mo Galbraith. I've been um, a resident of the Edmonds area for some 56 years. And um, like all of us in the world just recently, well, still in the coronavirus pandemic. So I'm just going to introduce myself a little first. So hi, I'm Preston, a junior at high school. So I would like to share my experience about the coronavirus as a high school student a bit. The pandemic hit mid-March 2020. And at that time, I was living in a retirement assisted living complex in Linwood, Washington. The activities were many and varied and the common areas were almost always had bustling activity going on. When the guidelines came out to essentially quarantine, everything came to an abrupt halt. So before Corona, school was basically my life. I would go to school, play school sports, hang out with my friends and was part of multiple clubs. At home, I would often be doing lots of homework, especially for my AP classes, which was very stressful. I would often lose lots of sleep and go to school the next day half unconscious. When the coronavirus was first heard of, I still went to school. Everything was still normal. I was still losing sleep, but most importantly, I was able to interact physically with the people around me. You could walk to your mailbox, but no lingering or visiting with other residents if they were present. And you could walk in the parking lot. That was it. I really didn't think coronavirus was that serious at first. I would still carry out my daily duties and even joke around a little about COVID with my friends. And then suddenly the cases skyrocketed. People were beginning to talk about school shutting down, but of course I thought that that was too good to be true. But it did happen. All stores, libraries, services were closed. Traffic on the streets became very light. And this wasn't just in our city or state, this was worldwide. Except for essential services, it was as if the world had shut down. So when school first shut down, I was set, it was set to shut down for only about two months. I remember that it was a Wednesday when they first announced it. And as someone who has been continuously stressed by school throughout my 10th grade year, I was super excited. So throughout the first few weeks, it was great. All my classes became basically like asynchronous and Every class was basically a guaranteed A, including all my AP classes. So throughout these first two months, it was very enjoyable and stress-free for me, and I kind of needed this break. When the school district then announced that there was no more in-person school for the rest of the year, I was super stoked. Despite this, as time went on, things became very bland. At first, my mind was still going fast, but as the weeks wore on, it seemed as if the world became very quiet, almost like suspended animation. But with everything so quiet, without any interruptions, be it phone, friend, TV, or a horn, I was finally able to hear my own thoughts. I actually liked it. As the coronavirus got worse and worse and things began, things began to shut down, I got more and more bored. As time went on for me, I was able to do more things that made me happy and had more time to self-reflect on myself as a person in order to better myself. At school, there's just so much supervision, like teachers are there and you actually get to interact with people. But online school, it's you still get the same amount of information, but it's two times as fast. And basically every single class is just um, taking notes and notes and notes. So it's kind of hard to pay attention at times, but I feel like I'm still getting like the same amount of education. You have a younger sibling, right? And yeah, I do. He's, he's learning online as well. Is it How's it going for him? Um, I think, um, so I actually have two younger siblings and I think they're, yeah, they're all working hard, trying to get, do the best that they can. Throughout all of that, um, were you active in after school activities and, and groups um, outside the classroom? Um, so I've been trying to, you know, con call my friends through FaceTime, sometimes on Zoom and I also started a club during COVID, an online club for my school. We had a, a social group that met three mornings a week up at the mall and we would walk uh, prior to the pandemic. And we just transferred that get together to Zoom meetings, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So did you connect with like a specific person or like a specific group like most? And then like, did you like get closer with them or anything like that? Uh, virtually because being able to meet new people, mm -hmm. um, it just wasn't an option. Um, yeah, whereas you might normally take a walk down on the Edmonds waterfront and stand and look at 
the view and somebody come up and you appreciate it together and you start talking, that, that just wasn't an option for what we were all going through. It does not have to mean that you're disconnected from what is happening outside your own environment. TV brings news of the rest of the world. Zoom, Skype, and FaceTime allow for virtual face-to-face -face with family and friends. The internet is always there with a wealth of knowledge to draw on. Books can still be read. And as the world adjusted to this, life could and did still go on, but without physical interaction. I'm kind of curious to see what life will be like when we come out the other side of this worldwide pandemic. Because of this virus, this world shut down. The economy went down drastically all around the world and impacted many people financially. For example, my dad, who is a dentist, had to stop working for about three months because of COVID. Despite this, I'm very appreciative of what I have because there are indeed many people out there who are struggling a lot more than my family. So COVID also brought many people apart and in a sense made people somewhat careful of one another. Society changed in which people all around the globe began to support one another in their society more than ever before, even though they had to be far apart. Furthermore, many topics such as justice came out during this time as well, including the tragic incident of George Floyd, which had many people stand up and protest against racism, something that may not have happened without COVID because society is always so busy. So you talked about like listening more to like your inner self and all that stuff inside um, within like your speech. So can you tell me like the ways that you listen to your inner self and like some of like the thoughts that went through your head? So um, I really questioned myself a lot because I had the time mentally to do that. And again, what our country has been through in 2020 um, with all of the issues that have come up, um, I really had time to think as to why I, yeah, why I thought the way I did. It, it just, it was, it gave me more quiet thought time. So do you have like any ideas of how it would be like any changes to the world? Well, it's interesting because when we started through this in March, things felt so intense at different periods of time. But part of that was what was going on in our world and in our country. Um, I don't know. I think we, at least I've become more used to what we're going through now. And that's almost become the norm. So I, I'm, I'm really confused. I'm, I'm curious to see what it's going to be like when we finally can breathe deeply and do whatever we want, whenever we want. But I, I think all of this is going to have changed how we do a number of things and some of it for the better, like always washing hands. Mm -hmm. You ask hard questions, Preston. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Um, so I always like to think positive and never negative, despite how bad the situation is. So thank you, COVID, for giving me something that I have been needing for a very long time, sleep. <laughs> it's been very enjoyable conversing with you. Yeah, it's been very enjoyable for me as well. Bye.